It's everything I've always wanted to do. I've always been passionate about space and science, and it's a great opportunity to do science communication and contribute to science. Um, one way is currently the only way that we can get to Mars on the kind of budget that we, we've got available in the next 10 years. What do your friends and family say about that? They are surprisingly supportive and proud and they've been sending me like so many messages over the past couple of days congratulating me and like it's just been really lovely. Uh, Dr. Kanani, do you think that uh, Maggie or indeed anyone else is actually going to get as far as Mars on this mission? Do I think that anyone's going to get as far as Mars? Well, it's really difficult to say, actually, because, yes, the technology is there, but the timescales that the Mars One mission is talking about just doesn't seem feasible. To land human beings on the surface of Mars in 2024, I'm really sorry, but I just don't imagine how that could be possible. Uh, Maggie Lou, what do you make of that? I mean, the details are a bit vague about this mission, aren't they? Um, I think there are, like, the available technologies to get us there. I mean, um, the last missions to the moon were in the 70s, so we've had space technology available for years, and it's more uh, about the funding rather than the technology available. Um, so, yeah. But what details have you been given? I mean, are you perhaps a little bit worried in a corner of your mind that this is a publicity stunt or a hoax of some kind? Um, so I've done a lot of research on it already and part of the selection process was actually a Mars test like um, learning about how previous Mars missions had failed or su were success, learning about their geology and geography. Um, so it's been really interesting. Uh, Dr. Kanani, is it always going to be within feasible science a one-way trip to get to Mars if you leave from Earth? Well, not, not really. I mean, so NASA are planning trips to Mars for human beings, and they are planning return missions. They're just not trying to do it on a shoestring, crowdfunded, and within the next 10 years. And I think that's the key thing. Uh, Maggie mentioned the funding, which is hopefully going to be through sort of TV and media and merchandising and crowdfunding. And six billion sounds like a lot of money, but it really isn't to get human beings to land safely on Mars. And that's part of the problem with it being this one-way one -way ticket. I mean, if we just wait a little bit longer and talk about it a bit more and get a bit more knowledge about how to get them back and a bit more money, then it, couldn't, it doesn't have to be this one-way mission, which is so ethically and morally uh, questionable. Because, uh, I mean, Maggie, what you're contemplating is effectively a suicide mission, isn't it? I mean, it's the rest of your life and all the other things you might have looked forward to in life given up on this journey to Mars. I don't really see it as a suicide mission. I see it as a way to leave a legacy and a huge impact on mankind and the general public. And um, I, I don't know, I think it's really important to inspire the future generations to be interested in science and about like not coming back um, in the astronauts that go to the ISS for like six or seven months when they come back they're, they're not able to walk again because of the effects of gravity on their bodies so even if I go to Mars for a long period of time I might not actually want to come back knowing that I would never be able to walk again but Maggie have you heard about this uh uh, expert uh, estimate that apparently crew to arrive on the planet Mars would not survive longer than 70 days and if so what do you make of this? Yeah so I've actually read the paper it's really interesting it's a study done by MIT and it's about regulating the amount of oxygen that we produce whilst we're up there so um, at the moment the technology isn't available to vent the oxygen to get the right balance um, like similar to the air that we breathe on Earth. And so after about 60 days, there would be a huge risk of fire. Um, however, we've got 10 years to get this technology moving. And 20 years ago, most people didn't like believe in mobile phones and we rely on it so much nowadays. So nothing's impossible. Um, Dr. Kanani, do, do you think whether or not uh, Maggie uh, goes to Mars uh, in the interest of humanity that this is the future of the race really, interplanetary travel and getting out into space is what we've got to do as uh, human beings. 
I, I do believe that planetary explora exploration is highly, highly significant and important for the future of the human race, but I'm just not sure that this is the way to do it. Yes, we do want to inspire the next generation of scientists and engineers, um, and we're doing that anyway. Look at the Rosetta mission, look at Finding Beagle 2 just a month or so ago. We're doing that anyway, and the UK have got such a brilliant impact and such a brilliant space agency coming up through the generations now that maybe this isn't the way to inspire the next generation.